Welcome to Nation Beat. I am Janelle Novel bringing you this brief on the pulse of our nation and highlights around the heart of St. Lucia. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney makes an adjustment to the Cabinet of Ministers for greater synergy and efficiency among ministries. Government has secured its ability to meet certain obligations of a recurrent nature. And the state of readiness of emergency responders at the Hiranora International Airport is put to the test. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Alan Chastney, has announced adjustments to several ministerial portfolios effective 1st November 2018. Honorable Dominic Fede is now the Minister for Tourism, Information, Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, with Honorable Fortuna Belrose taking on the role of Minister in the Ministry of Tourism, Information, Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, with responsibility for Culture and Creative Industries. Senior Communications Officer Nicole MacDonald explained the reasoning behind the changes. St. Lucians would recognize that the Ministry of Culture and the Creative Industries has now been joined with the Ministry for Information, Tourism and Broadcasting. This is the most significant change in the ministerial portfolios um, that was done on November 1st. The reason that this was done was because we saw as a government that there was a synergy, there was a relationship, a deep relationship between culture and between tourism. You also need to recognize that we have been doing some major changes with regards to the events on St. Lucia's calendar. So we saw significant success with our carnival product. We also saw significant and um, success with our June Quayol activities. The senior communications officer noted that the changes are to ensure greater synergy, efficiency and improve responsiveness to the needs of St. Lucians. McDonald also highlighted some of the benefits to be had as a result of the adjustments. So noting some of the changes that we have made with regards to you know, beefing up our events, putting more funding and more resources into our events. We know that this has influenced our tourism product and we've seen growth in both areas. So it made sense that we would join the two ministries and explore the relationship between culture and tourism because we do know that we are selling an authentic St. Lucian product and part of being authentic is promoting our culture. So we anticipate that there will be significant benefits to culture and the creative industries um, going forward that would ensure that you know um, it grows even more. Other changes include Minister Honorable Bradley Felix, who now holds the portfolio of Commerce, Industry, General Investment, Industry, Enterprise, Enterprise, Development and, and Consumer Affairs. Minister Honorable because Leonard Montour to the Ministerial Portfolio of Equity, Social, Social Justice, Local, Local Government, Government and Empowerment, and Minister Will Honorable you, Edmund Estefan with Youth Development and Sports. Previously appointed portfolios of members of the world. Cabinet remain unchanged. The government of St. Lucia has secured its ability to meet certain obligations of a recurrent nature. This after the Senate on Tuesday, November 6, gave its approval to the Minister for Finance to borrow by means of advances, sums not exceeding $55 million from commercial banks for a period of six months. The sums are to be charged on and paid out of the consolidated fund. Minister in the Ministry of Finance, Senator Honorable Eubaldus Raymond noted that the motion was routine and important to the continuity of government business. The good thing about it, Madam President, we did not draw down not one cent with from this overdraft. Not one cent. So this advance, Madam President, is just a backup. It's a backup. Because the government, time and time again, most times, would have... Um, cash flow issues. All governments face that. So we have this as just a, a backup plan. In the event that there is not sufficient money at the time to cover salaries and other recurrent expenditures, the government can go to the bank and say, look, we have the authorization given by Parliament to draw down on the various um, accounts. And I said earlier, we did not draw down on the previous advanced levels 
of $55 million. So this time we are coming seeking the same $55 million that we sought for the last time. And we believe, based on projections, cash flow projections, government expenses, short-term expenses, we believe that the $55 million is sufficient. Minister in the Ministry of Finance, Senator Honorable Ubaldus Raymond. In other news from Tuesday's sitting of the Senate, the Denry North Water Supply Redevelopment Project also received a nod of approval with senators authorizing the amendment of the loan agreement for the funding of Phase 2. Senator Honorable Mary Isaac, Minister for Health and Wellness, underscored government's commitment to improving the quality of life for all citizens. Madam President, water is life. The people in the valley have suffered for a very long time um, as a result of lack of good quality water on a continuous basis. I personally have experienced that in the valley and I know how happy the people are with this project. From the first phase when it was opened and of course we promised them that we were going to continue and complete this project so that they can get consistent supply of good quality water every day. The amended loan agreement for the Denry North Water Supply Redevelopment Project makes provision for the borrowing of an amount not exceeding 11.2 million US dollars from the Caribbean Development Bank. The loan consists of a special funds resources portion in the amount of 4.065 million US dollars. An ordinary capital resources a portion of 2.16 million US dollars and 5 million dollars from the Anges Français de Développement Credit Facility. This is Nation Beat. When we come back, emergency responders are put to the test. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do the that No, they do. think about the children Think about the children yeah. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution Use organic and join Excessive agrochemical use, additives, and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy, and consume organic. A message from Rye St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The good food revolution. A full-scale emergency simulation exercise has taken place at the Hiranara International Airport to test the state of readiness of emergency responders in the south of the island. The St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority SLASPA holds such an exercise at the airport every two years. Here is Lisa Joseph. It was mid-morning when word went out of a crash landing at the Hiranara International Airport. A jetliner carrying over 120 passengers had crash landed. Initial reports suggested heavy casualties. Fire trucks from the Hiranora International Airport were first on the scene, seeking to contain the blaze and to attend to passengers who had survived the crash landing. What was being tested was the, the response of our fire and emergency team, um, the, the airport police, along with our communication our communication plan. There were many casualties, some charred by the raging fire. This scenario was created to test how first responders from emergency services in the south of the island dealt with survivors. We had um, victim care where um, persons, the fire service, the EMTs, um, did the, the search and rescue, they did the triaging, they did the stabilization of the patients or the, 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 the passengers who were injured. We also had um, the, an advanced medical post from St. Jude, meaning that the ER department of St. Jude sent a team to the field to triage and stabilize um, the casualties before they were transported to St. Jude. 
The fire services, police emergency response agencies, and the management of the airport were all under scrutiny as evaluators monitored the execution of prescribed emergency plans. The plan was to test the responding agencies, the police, parts police, fire service, medical, medicine central, and the community um, health centers and um, wellness centers. And also to test the, um, the airport management response team. At 9.36, firefighting and rescue. This was also a test of the EOC, the Emergency Operations Center, manned by airport management. And they were there to supervise to ensure that there was proper leadership, proper communication and proper coordination. The notes of local and regional evaluators were taken into consideration as a debriefing followed. It was a preliminary look at what went well and what did not. We could always improve. There's no system or plan that is perfect. And we're looking to pick up from any, any advice that can be given in terms of improving everything from our agency preparedness to our communication. All in all, I think it went very well, but there are lessons learned. There are always lessons to be learned. Next year, it will be the turn of the George F.L. Charles Airport. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. The impact of Quail Heritage Month is being assessed with the aim of not only quantifying the monetary contribution to the economy, but also determining how nationals relate to the St. Lucian cultural heritage. That has been revealed by Minister of Responsibility for Culture and Creative Industries, Senator Honorable Fortuna Bell Rose. Speaking during Tuesday's sitting of the Senate, Honorable Bell Rose noted that artisans, seamstresses, and farmers are among the list of local entrepreneurs that benefited from the month long celebration, which was decentralized this year. And the Folk Research Center revealed that over half of our population was engaged in some way or the other in, of course, the whole arts and heritage um, month-long festivities. During that time, of course, we recognize our people, and this year we focus on the iconic violinist Ramo Polion of Bellevue Viewport for his contribution to music. We showcase our fashion and our designers through pageantry and dress, Creole style, for the scheduled events. The schools, the workplaces, um, and of course, young and old were all involved in the celebrations. The Lawen Creole pageant this year attracted several candidates from across the country, Monrepo, Groselet, Choiselle, Beaufort, and even Castries. And of course, Monrepo emerged victorious with Groselet and Choiselle coming in the second and third places. Senator Bellrose saluted the achievement of Julian Alfred, highlighting that the silver medal win at the Youth Olympics in October was indicative of what St. Lucia can bring to the international stage. A reminder or a reassurance to us as a people that we can achieve globally if we put in the work that is required to ensure that we succeed. And that's why we are happy to celebrate the Arts and Heritage Month, because it gives us an opportunity to bring St. Lucia into focus and all what we produce so that our people can realize that there is a lot in us that we need to continue to give to our society for the benefit of this society. So I want to congratulate the main host communities and all the satellite communities that hosted events. Um, we want to thank the FRC and also the CDF and Event St. Lucia for the commitment to the work that, you know, that is happening. We must now undertake the research to determine, of course, how successful this month is and how this month of October and what we do and how we buy in local, you understand, can be transferred to other, other months. Minister in the Ministry of Tourism, Information, Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries with responsibility for culture and creative industries, Senator Honorable Fortuna Bell Rose. That's Nation Beat. Join us next time on NTN at 7.30 p.m. with a repeat at 7.30 a.m. and on this station as we feel the pulse and heart of our community. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.